Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're gonna make a pie crust. And we'll get to baking right, right after, after this. this. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah, so today we're gonna make a pie crust. Cause this is the season for baking. Yeah, and this is a great pie crust because you're gonna be able to use it two different ways. You can use it for a sweet pie, like a pecan pie or a pumpkin pie, or even like our chocolate cream pie. Yay! Or you can use it for more of a savory meal. Yeah, like for a chicken pot pie or a turkey pot pie or a quiche, because I really miss chicken pot pie and turkey pot pie, honestly. Yeah, and it's a very similar recipe. You're only gonna have to modify it very slightly and we'll go over that as we go through the ingredients. So you ready to do this? Yes. Okay, you only need a few different things. So here, let's go over what we need. The first thing you're gonna need is some coconut flour. But don't panic, you are not gonna taste the coconut. No, you are not gonna taste the coconut. The reason you're not gonna taste the coconut is because this pie uh, crust has an entire stick of butter. And if you put enough butter on stuff, you could eat a boot. <laughs> Okay, next thing you're going to need, and this is what's going to make it um, not fall apart. One okay. of the things you're going to find with a lot of pie crusts in the keto realm crumbly. is they get very, very crumbly. So to kind of give you more of that like gluten kind of experience, we're going to add some xanthan gum. Very important to have xanthan gum for this recipe. I love that. Have the gluten experience. <laughs> Without the uh, diarrhea. Okay, next, if you're making this a sweet pie crust, like for our coconut, for our cream pie or a pumpkin pie, we're gonna add in some a powdered erythritol. Mm -hmm. You can also use um, your monk fruit sweetener, like oh, yeah. from Lakanto, mm -hmm. or you can even use allulose. But this is what we use for this one. And finally, for the sweet pie, we're going to use some vanilla. Which you know I like to wear this ingredient. <laughs> Smells delicious. So again, if you're going to make a savory pie, all you have to do is eliminate the vanilla and eliminate the powdered erythritol. So you're talking only three ingredients. Three ingredients. If you're making the savory one. Right. Okay, so we are going to actually make this in my handy dandy KitchenAid, mostly because we never get to use this thing anymore. And we love it. So if you don't have a big KitchenAid like this, don't worry about it. Uh, you can just use a handheld blender. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you ready? Yes. Since everything is over here, I'm just gonna kind of do through it and I don't wanna call it a so easy Rachel can do it because then I get yelled at if I help you at all. So right. what we're gonna do is one cup of coconut flour. And I just filled this thing up, so we're gonna have to- It's very full. It's very full. One cup of coconut flour. It's like Rachel after an afternoon at the buffet. To that, again, we're making the sweet version today because mm -hmm. we're gonna be using this for another recipe video that we're working on later on today. We're going to add two tablespoons of our powdered confectioner sugar or powdered erythritol. This guy. And a half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. And again, if you're making a savory pie crust, just eliminate the erythritol. There you go. Okay, and we're gonna put that in there. And now we're just going to kind of turn on the KitchenAid and get that all sifted around. All we wanna do is kind of mix it and make sure everything's all mixed up well together. Good enough. Next, we're going to need our eggs. We forgot to say we need eggs. Oh yeah. Let me grab two eggs. Don't you hate those recipe videos where you say you only need three ingredients, but you actually need four. My bad. So yeah, so it's gonna be just coconut flour, the uh, xanthan gum, butter, and eggs. And eggs. So we're gonna add to this mixture in here. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on and we're going to use two eggs. Which I will let you crack because we know what my track record is with cracking eggs. And for some reason I'm cracking it over the bowl even though I always yell at you for doing that. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay. Get rid of those for you. We're gonna let this mix up a little bit. While that's mixing, we're going to add 
about a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and I never measure vanilla. Are you sure that's half a teaspoon? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the key to this. What we're going to do is you're going to take your stick of butter, and we're going to cut it into cubes, just like this. Magic. Okay? And you want to make sure they're nice and cold. Okay. And we're going to go ahead, and we're going to just kind of dump these in here, and we're going to let it mix. And we're going to let this thing run, and you're going to notice there's no way to get the overhead on here unless I kind of pick up the whole machine and move it over like that. Will there it work? Go. Kind of works. Kind of. You're going to see it's getting super crumbly, and we're going to just let this thing go for a few minutes uh, until everything gets well incorporated. Now, what you're going to see is the longer this thing runs, it's going to start picking up everything off the sides. And again, you could be using a traditional, like, hand mixer. But we're just and infatuated gonna, with this thing. It's going to start to clump, and now you'll see how it's coming together in one ball. Once it gets like that, we're completely done. It smells so good. It's like a Yankee candle. It smells like butter. And this is what you're going to have, just like this. It's like a very traditional dough. Okay, now if you want to go ahead and get that all together, mm -hmm. what you want to do, that's not saran wrap. Here's saran wrap. Uh. You're going to pull that out. It's okay. going to be one ball. I'll put this off to the side. And you get to deal with the cook's worst nightmare. What is that? Saran wrap. <laughs> We're going to put it in our saran wrap, form it into a ball. Is it really the cook's worst nightmare? I hate saran wrap. And this is why. Because it tries to fight you? I can't get it out of the box without it like all coming apart. There we go. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this and we're going to stick this in the refrigerator for a couple of hours because pie dough is much easier to work with when it's super cold. Oh. Okay, so we'll be back in a couple of hours. And we're back. Through the magic of television, two hours just turned into two minutes. Right? It also helps that I made one ahead of time. That does. <laughs> okay. Now, one thing I did want to mention, this pie crust recipe that you're going to see, it's linked down below, will actually make two of these disposable pie pans. Which okay? is nice. When I made the recipe, I made it because this is what we use the most. This is our lock and lock pie crust uh, pie pan. And it is, if I can get the top off. The glass one. This is the glass one. We've never used this one. We have two of them. Yeah. But you can see how it's much deeper, so we needed a bigger pie crust. So that it went all the way so up So it's going to make one of these bigger ones or two of these little ones, and you can see the difference in the size. I like the blue color. But since it's the holidays, we're going to make the smaller one. So what we're going to do, and we're only going to make one, we're going to take this, and we are going to cut it in half. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some parchment paper. I'm going to put it here. We're going to... Press this down. Now's when all of that time with Play-Doh pays off. <laughs> and we're going to roll this out, and it's probably going to be easier if we get rid of this cutting board. Do you want to do this or you want me to do no, it? No, I want you to do it. And what we're going to do is just try to get this rolled into as much of a circle as possible. Sometimes I'll actually like use my hand and kind of like stretch it out a little bit more to make it a little bit easier. I tend to make a trapezoid. <laughs> I try. Now, you don't have to get this perfect because we're going to then use our hand to kind of form it the rest of the way. You also don't have to roll this out. Oh. The other way you can do it is actually take the pie crust, especially if you don't want to refrigerate it, and just put it in your pan and start hand forming it into the pan. Oh, nice. I just like to have that same consistency throughout the entire so it's thing. the same thickness all yeah. throughout. And I like this rolling pin because it's got these guides that we can change the height on it so I know exactly. You can actually get them all the same. Right. Because I'm not super great with the rolling pin and like having it all, like I'll have like ridges, things like that. Some people in the Food Network, it's like. And now we're going to transfer it into our pan. Nice. Now it will still crack a little bit. So the best thing to do is just kind of take it like this, like this and flip it over. But it's not like some of the other crusts that we've worked with. No. That are like super crumbly. Now that we have it in there, what we're going to do is we're just going to use our fingers to kind of fill it in the rest of the way. And I like a nice tall crust behind whatever it is that I'm eating. I don't like the ones so much with a cheesecake where it's just the bottom and the sides are the cheesecake. Oh, see, I don't want it up along the top of the ridge. Oh, see, I, I just want it up the sides, but not up along the ridge. I like it high. 
You can help here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're doing such a great job. And all I'll do is I'll just keep peeling pieces off. Again, I'm not perfect with this. The pie crust is great. I'm just not say, great at forming it. We just like it tasty. We're not as concerned with what it looks like. <laughs> as everyone could know from the pictures that we take. Now, if I sat here and played with it enough, we could get it up along the top. But for time's sake, I think we're not going to bother with that. I think it's good. Because you can see how it's like along the bottom. And again, if you don't want to pre-roll it, you can just kind of put it in and do that. But again, what I like to do is I don't like it along the ridge. So what I'm going to do is just kind of pull that off of the ridge like that. Next, we're going to take a fork because with the coconut flour, it's going to start to bubble. Oh. And if you want to grab a fork yeah. and just poke a bunch of holes in the bottom. Do, 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 You can get out your aggression. Okay, 350 degree oven, about eight to 10 minutes until it starts to brown. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and this is the final product. You can see what it looks like there. And again, we did this in the smaller tin. So this is a half of the total recipe that you see linked down below. And it's just beginning to go golden brown. You don't want to overcook it because you're going to fill this with something and then stick it back in the oven. Right. You don't want the finished product to be overdone. Right. Okay, so like Rachel said, all you have to do now is you know, figure out whatever you're gonna fill it with, whether it be our chocolate cream pie, I'll leave a link for that down below. Yeah. Or you can use it for a pecan pie, for a pumpkin pie, whatever you want. If you're making something savory, like I said, just eliminate the vanilla, eliminate the erythritol. Easy cheesy. You wanna go over the nutrition on this piece right here? Yeah, now of course it's all gonna depend on how many slices you yeah. make. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is, again, it's gonna depend on a couple things, and it, I'm always like, kind of worried about putting nutrition in a video or in a recipe because the ingredients that we use may not be the same as you and you're always going to notice like you know buy the coconut flour that we use which is anthony's that it's going to have certain nutrition on it and then go buy the one at walmart it's completely different right so whenever you see nutrition on our videos or in our recipes it's based on the products that we are actually using i always suggest that you go and plug whatever products you're using into chronometer or something like that mm -hmm. so if you base the entire pie though because it's going to depend some we'll cut this into like 8 10 12 pieces somebody else may cut it into four that would be me. That's why he's in charge of cutting the slices. Okay, so this entire pie crust is 715 calories. Mm -hmm. It is 57 grams of fat. Remember, lots of butter. 14 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. 48 total carbohydrates for the entire pie crust. Remember yeah. that. 25 grams of fiber. 15 grams of sugar alcohols, again, because that's the sweet version, and that's going to make it eight net carbs. Which I think is kind of awesome. Yeah, so if you're cutting this into a normal pie, eight slices, it's one net carb for the crust plus whatever's in your filling. Well, now that you have the pie crust, you can make any kind of delicious pie you want, whether it's going to be a savory one or a sweet one. Sky is the limit. So leave in the comments down below what you gonna put in this thing? Yeah, let us know. Are you gonna make a pecan pie, a pumpkin pie, a chocolate cream pie? A chicken pot pie? A, a coconut pie? Um, a quiche? Or, you know what I want? I want a lemon meringue pie. We need to get on that recipe. We're gonna to need to work on a keto version of lemon meringue pie because that was my favorite pie growing up. I actually really like lemon. So, well, that is our video for today. Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.